guys and dolls, it's me Cora. Welcome back. Today I have a really fun makeup tutorial for you. It's very, very colorful. In fact, I was wearing this in a couple of videos last week and a lot of you requested this as a tutorial, so I was like, yes, let's do it. Um, but the moment of clarity when I knew I had to do it was when Kim Johnson, that's Kim with a Y, commented on the video and said that the colors of it reminded her of a hummingbird. And then I was like, oh my god, because I had all the feels because my mom absolutely loved hummingbirds like that was her absolute favorite also she loved anything that was rainbow like she collected carnival glass um just any kind of thing that was like super super i mean i'm obviously her daughter i mean you can tell <laughs> i mean these are her earrings here's her hummingbird necklace i'm just like representing for my madre today like to, in a way to honor her i know that might be kind of weird but my mom was so proud of me and she loved my videos so much that it kind of just feels right to do this and i hope that you guys also enjoy this because it's just a great makeup tutorial fun fun look and uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I think I might be running a little bit low on my NARS Pro Prime, but this is one of my favorite primers for when I want like a really bold eyeshadow look, but I don't necessarily want to put down like a white eye or like eyeliner or something to, you know, kind of make everything pop or whatever. It just, it makes everything super vibrant, but it's also essentially clear once you blend it out all over the lids. So it's great to use on any skin type, but it really will enhance the colors. I'm going to be starting out with the Kat Von D Mi Vita Loca Remix palette and I'm going to be starting out with this amazing color called Rewind. It's a burgundy that just won't quit. I mean it is just too good. <laughs> Very excited. So I have that on a brush from uh, Furless and I don't know the name of this brush. I think it's just called like the, the Bronze Blending Brush. Let me just explain this to you guys. Okay they sent me like a whole bunch of brushes which I am in the process of reviewing and everything. But this is the one that like I went to their website and bought two more of it because I love it so much. So it's kind of like a similar concept to the MAC 217 where it has a pinched ferrule so it almost has like two sides. But it's so much larger so it's great for doing like a large sweep. Like for instance like I always do something as like a background color of my crease because I don't have like a strong crease naturally so I always create that. Of course we're doing like crazy colors today so it's not right, you know maybe super necessary. I picked up the color on one side, I flip it over and then I ride that in my crease line. Sort of like back and forth motions. And then I flipped it the other way to so deposit a bit more color just where I want it. And now we have a nice little soft wash of red for the, our background. Next I'm going to take Harpsichord, which is a beautiful sort of orangey copper. I'm placing that just in the inner crease area and blending it out a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is to kind of soften out the edge. So I'm going to take Molder, which is the lovely yellow cream color, and I'm going to put that right underneath my eyebrows as my highlight, but I'm also going to blend it down into our burgundy shade to get that blend going and also just basically all over, all around what we've already done. It just softens it out beautifully. So on the lid, I put a beautiful green. This is C-Note from the Urban Decay Vice palette. And I'm not bothering to like tap off the excess or anything, so I'm just trying to like get a whole lot of color on there really fast. This can create a lot of fella as you're seeing. But if you're in a rush, or like for instance, if you're doing makeup on a lot of different people, and so you need to like get color on quickly, and you're doing the eye makeup first and doing the, the face makeup last, the 217 is, or 217, 252 is great for that because it just gives you, I mean, you saw how fast, fast and easy it was to get that green on. Nope. So picking up Beat Down, Ooh. and let's not let the palette slam on me. <laughs> and I'm gonna blend that onto the lid. And I'm just doing the whole outer corner with this. So over the green, it'll look a little more blue, and then over the red, it'll look more purple it's sort of a color that's in between the two. Like if someone twisted my arm and asked me, is it purple or blue? I'd say, eh, it's purple, kind of. I'm gonna take a little bit of Arctic, which is right next to C-Note in the palette. Make it a little more teal. I feel like I did that. It's, it, this is hard because I'm trying to recreate a look I did like two weeks ago or so. So I don't really remember exactly what I did. As always, to remove my fallout, I'm gonna use my Bioderma Sensi Bio H2O. And a cotton ball. 
go delicately around the outer eye area. Oh, here, because I don't want to disrupt our shape. But holy moly, <laughs> so much fall out. So finally, I'm going to pick up Grasshopper and put that over Sino because it's just a little like paled out and I feel like a bright green is really what I need at this moment. I did sort of skip the inner corner there a little bit. I'm then going to take Beat Down once more and just blend that a little bit over the outer corners. So now for my foundation, I have the dregs of my uh, hourglass veil primer left, so I'm just like scraping it out every time I use it. But there's actually still like when even when you think it's dead because it won't pump out anymore, there's still tons of product in it, which is kind of amazing because it's expensive, but it is my favorite. So I get that on my hands, and well, you you get the drill with primer. You put it on your face. Just stuck my finger in my foundation. That's okay. We'll just wipe it on the face. So for my foundation today, I'm going to be using my NARS Sheer Glow in Mont Blanc. I haven't used this one in a while, so I figured why not just go ahead and take it for a little test drive. And then I'm using my Furless Brush. This is the CB2. So put the foundation on the face and blend it out. For my concealer today, I'm like really feeling like full coverage, so I'm using my Make It Forever Full Coverage Concealer. This is in the shade 3. And this is like really crazy full coverage and very, very waterproof. So you do want to use this sparingly, particularly around the eye area, because you don't want to overdo it and then have like major cake under eye. However, if you have like issues with your concealer just kind of like going bye-bye after a couple hours, you feel like you're like your eyes like eat the concealer it's an amazing amazing concealer it's also really great at covering up zits so to highlight and brighten right here because I have a little bit of sallow tones so I take this rose radiance pen from Mac which has a pink tone to it. it's very light so it's great at really highlighting that and then also taking down that sallow note because um, nobody got time for that so to set all this in place I'm using my NARS crystal powder and a powder puff. I love it because it doesn't really add, it doesn't add any color and it doesn't really add much texture. You can see it just like takes off the shine, like forehead shiny. Just doing a strip of black along the lash line today. And in the outer corner, especially when I'm doing like the left side, which is your right, I think when you're watching, but I always have issues so I try to like look down and stamp it on as best as I can. For my eyelashes today, I want to have a nice like fanned out fluttery effect. So I'm going to be using the Eyelash 16 from Lashes in a Box. This is a really, really cool company. They're from San Francisco, so I'm all about it because it's a local company. But what I really, really like about it is that you get 10 pairs of identical lashes. So if you're doing, for instance, like bridal work or something where you always use the same lashes, it's much more economical to buy them in this way. Um, or if you're doing any kind of like runway show or just any kind as a makeup artist or as just like a regular person and you're like, I just really like these lashes and want to have tons of them. So when you get a pair of lashes, you always want to kind of take off the factory glue because they're a little funky and it doesn't really help with the application. It can be really helpful if you're just trying to like place something on and like see if it works. So I usually will like kind of place something and see how it works out before I remove the glue. But when you're actually applying it, remove it and put on real glue. So this is the House of Lashes Lash Glue. Smells kind of like chemicals and lavender, if I'm being honest with you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attempt to place these on, keeping in mind how they're placing in the inner corner. No, 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 no. Okay. They're just sort of hovering above where I want to place them. Alright, well... 
that again. So one of the trickiest things about false lashes is getting them to look right. Like sometimes you put on your eyeliner and you put the false lashes on and it doesn't really make sense. Don't, don't worry too much about it. Just go over it with a line of black. In fact, I even use the false lash band as a guide of where I want to draw that line. So the first strip of liner that you always see me put on is usually just to sort of cover the gap between my natural lashes and the band. And then the second one is just to actually be the eyeliner. So I'm using a little bit of Paper Pusher mascara today. Just all over my lower lash or my upper lashes. And this step is hyper important for me because my lashes are so blonde. Without it just has like a weird like halo of blonde. It's not very cute. Lower lashes, I'm gonna start out with a very pale lavender color right in my inner corner right here. This is Crybaby from Colourpop. Can we talk about how pigmented that is? It is so insane and gorgeous. We just need to have like a moment of silence for how awesome it is. But while we're having that same moment, I'm gonna go ahead and blend it out because this is a waterproof pencil and if I don't blend it out, it won't. Great, so anyway, <laughs> blend that all over. This is so pigmented and amazing, and I love the name Crybaby. It makes me think of the Johnny Depp movie, which I love. I love John Waters. Does anyone else out there love John Waters films? Should we have like a film fest? I think we should. And then over the top of that, I think I originally used Love, which is a beautiful light pink, but I'm going to use Muse, because for one, Muse is my favorite band, and for two, I think it goes better with Crybaby. For cohesive reasons, yeah, I'll go ahead and take a little bit of love and blend that into our copper eyeshadow from earlier. Yeah, that transition's a bit better. Yes. So for my lower lash line today, I'm going to use Piggy Bank from ColourPop. Super bright purple. Like, damn. Damn, son. It is so pigmented. I love it. So I went ahead and applied that on, and then I'm going to take a little smudgy brush, this is MAC 228, yeah. And then I'm going to do a combination of 1985 over that in the inner area, and it's really almost the same color, so it just sort of enhances it. And then I'm going to take Beat Down, this sort of blue-purple that we used earlier, and I'm going to pack that on the outer corner. And I'm also going to bring it up, sort of like rounding that corner of the eye with that shadow. So at this point the makeup doesn't look quite right, like you can see this side I've definitely fixed it up a little bit and this side I haven't. Part of it is that that, that red purple color got into my um, inner room so it's looking really funky right now. So I'm going to take go in the inner room with a little teeny tiny q-tip. These ones are really great. They're from a brand called Esom. Got them from Muse Beauty in San Francisco. And then you can go in your inner rim with the white pencil. So the little mini q-tip, first of all, doesn't have as much lint as a regular q-tip, so it's better for the inner rim. It helped to kind of suck up any moisture that was there, and it also got rid of that purple liner that was on my lash line, or on my inner rim. So for my bronzery contour today, I'm going to be using the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. I'm going to mix these two back and forth, and I'm going to be using a Furless CB3 brush. So mix those two kind of back and forth on the... And I'm going to place that right where I'd place contour, maybe a little bit higher than what I would do with contour. Pick a little bit more of the more gray color up, or the cooler tone color. I'm just going to sort of walk that color along my hairline. And without picking out any more product, just put that on my jawline. And this looks really intense right now, but I'm about to apply my blush over it and sort of all melds together. But the other thing that you can do to help them meld together is to take this peachy color from the palette. And see, like, this is where you apply contour, this is where you put blush. So I sort of put it in between the two to start that blend off. 
the blush that I'm going to use Love Hangover from Too Faced. It's a beautiful warm pink. And it's really, really pigmented. So at first I'm just going to sort of dot it on my cheeks with this brush because this brush is dense. So like super pigmented and a dense brush equals mega blush. So I'm just going to like stick it on at first and then slowly start to blend it out. I love that this blush is called Love Hangover because that's the song they used in the promos for the final season of Mad Men. And so whenever I hear that song, I think of Mad Men, which makes me happy because I love Mad Men. So nice, beautiful peachy blush. For lips, I'm going to do this one from the gem set. It's To The Rescue. It's a nice, beautiful berry plum shade. And I overdid it. These ones are so liquidy, they're kind of sloppy, actually. And then I always gotta fill in my little freckle guy, cause, you know. If you got a little beauty mark, you know, you actually, sometimes, I'll go ahead and one and two so now that I'm done filling in my little beauty marks that's the look I hope that you guys enjoyed this video I want to say a huge thank you to Kim Johnson who pointed out how much this look reminded her of hummingbird wings and it just gave me this great inspiration to go ahead and do this as a tutorial because my mom loved anything hummingbird anything hummingbird she had to have and so this is kind of perfect and it's a great way to honor her um, do a great makeup tutorial what she loved my makeup tutorial she was so supportive and everything and that's it. So I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you later. Bye.